Good evening and welcome to Top Water Live. Tonight on Top Water Live, we preview the Lake Series, Lake Shore Division, Lake Release. It's tough to say. We welcome our special guest, 2019 Top Water Angler of the Year, Matt Pyatt. We take a look inside the Border City Classic and how that took a year off hiatus and now it's back. Plus, you don't want to miss Last Cast, our new Tuesday night feature. All that and more tonight on Top Water Live. It doesn't matter what you fish, you need the right bait. Berkeley Power Bait, now in 54 proven shapes. From crawls and creatures, to worms, grubs, swim baits, and more. And 85 sizes, and all are infused with that deadly power bait flavor. Fish bite and won't let go, giving you up to 18 times longer to set the hook. And that means you catch more fish. Yeah, it's time for a bigger tackle box. Berkeley, catch more fish. It doesn't matter what you fish, you need the right bait. Berkeley Power Bait, now in 54 proven shapes. From crawls and creatures, to worms, grubs, swim baits, and more. And 85 sizes, and all are infused with that deadly power bait flavor. Fish bite and won't let go, giving you up to 18 times longer to set the hook. And that means you catch more fish. Yeah, it's time for a bigger tackle box. Berkeley, catch more fish. Hi, I am Kyle Van Leuven here with episode three of Topwater Live. Here is what is going on in the world of kayak fishing. So KBF season wrapped up this past weekend with a three series event, uh, the Challenge Series, Trail Series, and Pro Series Championships. Challenge Series is the online series, which was won by Josh Stewart, who also won the Pro Series, and the Trail Series uh, was won by Russ Snyders. Uh, Topwater, we are going to be holding our Grand River Tournament this weekend on Sunday, which is our final tournament for the year, so make sure to get out there. Uh, code is going to be announced at 10 p.m., and that must be placed on the Topwater Trail Series identifier. That can be found in the file section on our group. And make sure that you have your waivers submitted. Uh, if you have a question about those, make sure to message us and get those submitted um, before this weekend. Registration deadline is this Saturday at noon. And then open waters are going to be from the Northland Drive Bridge in Grand Rapids out to the Pierheads. Hey everyone, Abu Garcia Pro, Hunter Shock here. I want to talk about my favorite rod in the Abu Garcia lineup, the Veritas series. I have a ton of confidence in this rod. It's one of the first rods I've ever used and it's grown with me throughout the years. And there's so many great characteristics on this low price point rod. First is the foam handle. It has a great locking seat for your reel that's gonna keep it secure at all times. Moving all the way up to the bait keeper here, it's a very unique bait keeper that you can slide your Texas rig in, not having to unhook it from your plastic all the way up to the blank it's 30 ton graphite it's super light strong and durable very sensitive and the titanium guides are light and also very strong if you haven't checked out this abu garcia veritas rod i suggest you do welcome back uh, we hope you are enjoying the berkeley series commercials uh, again topwater trail series hosted by berkeley uh, so we want to keep plugging away at them if you haven't had a chance to check out a berkeley product please get out there and try it uh, at this time we'd like to introduce our 2019 topwater trail series angler of the year mr matthew pyatt hey how's it going thanks for joining us tonight bud oh, heck yeah it's happy to have you here so right away we want to get into uh matt pyatt and yeah scary yeah absolutely it's all good we'll make the questions nice and easy for you oh goodness softball them up so to speak oh. well matt uh you've made a pretty big splash in the kayak fishing sport as of late uh i know you've been a fisherman for a long time um but since relocating from Tennessee up to Michigan. Uh, what were you doing before kayak fishing? Um, I fished a lot of bass tournaments um, in boats uh, growing up and uh, the biggest thing from moving to Tennessee to here is slowing down and finesse fishing because back home I mean the fisheries are so packed with largemouth bass that you could just burn the banks and catch lots of big fish and 
up here you got to really slow down and finesse the fish into biting i, I kind of like that because i love love to finesse fish it's so much fun yeah what got you interested and started in the sport of kayak fishing going from the boat to the kayak honestly i couldn't afford a boat yeah i mean <laughs> a lot decided, of people have that same boat i i uh, actually tom mullins i i got with him on facebook and and started talking about michigan kayak trail and i uh, ended up buying a cheap you know four hundred dollar kayak three hundred dollar kayak and and uh three years ago joined the michigan kayak trail and went out to um the first tournament was at gull lake i believe and uh, went out there and fished, and that's where I met Grant and uh, a few other guys. And then it kind of once once you catch one in the kayak, you start going, "Oh man, this is so much yeah, fun!" Yeah, it's a whole different ball game Absolutely. fishing out of a kayak than it is a boat, yeah. especially up here early spring, cold yeah. water. You get into one of those big pike, and it pulls you around for half a mile. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Well, how would you say your career as a tournament fisherman is shaping up so far, and what's What's the end goal? What are oh. we? What are we trying to read? Is is this for fun? Or oh, this we... is just for fun. I, I I I could never see myself going on past this. If something happens and it works out that way, great. If not, I love the sport. I love to fish, and that's the only thing I can say that I love to do as a hobby more than anything. I would rather fish than do anything else. So, I love it. I feel the same way, man. Um, as the inaugural Topwater Trail Series Angler of the Year, I want to take a couple minutes and go back and revisit the, this, the past season. Okay. Uh, now, I'm trying to figure out how you pulled off this AOY. Now, out of the 12 events, you only finished outside of the top 10 one time. Yeah. So 11 top 10 finishes. That's pretty impressive on bodies of water that most of us have never fished before. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I, I would put my success to staying simple, going finessing, finesse fishing, getting a limit early. You can get a limit early. I mean, you can go look for a bigger fish. And staying away from Dave Mole, that was the big deal. You got to stay away yeah. from Dave. If you don't stay away from Dave... Um, you guys will get in an argument about the same fish because me and him obviously caught the same fish the whole season. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you guys were uh, neck and neck for most of the way. So strategy from staying away from Dave is basically just get, you know, 10, 20 yards from the ramp? And... Absolutely. you got to leave the <laughs> ramp. Uh, Dave anchored on the ramp all season long. It was kind of funny because we'd all look around and go, where's Dave? Oh. <laughs> Well, there he is. His truck just pulled up an hour after the tournament started. <laughs> and then he finished second or first. I mean, he beat me three, two times. Two times, actually one time. We, we're not going to go into that. He beat me once, and the other time we tied, and neither one of us left the boat ramp. Everybody else went to the storm. You guys went three miles down the road, and me and Dave didn't leave the boat ramp. That's yeah, I, I think it speaks volumes because I, I, we've talked about this on here before, but uh, I believe it was Gun Lake where – I spent, I don't know, probably a half hour getting the other side of the lake. I made five or six casts, storm hit, and I was pretty much off the water for the rest of the night. But I, by that point, you had actually already caught a limit. And Oh, I, I caught a limit at Gun Lake in the first 10 minutes. I mean, it was one after another, and I didn't go 100 yards from the boat ramp. And I didn't get there. The tournament started at, I think, 6. And I didn't get there till 6. I put in, Dave still was setting his stuff up. I put in and literally went out to the first lily pad I saw and just sat there the whole time and just there was a few guys around me and they said how many fish did you catch off those lily pads I said at least 50 <laughs> <laughs> I mean and then then the storm came I went back in and then I come back out after the storm and and did the same thing and me and Dave ended up tying I really wish I could have got one one bigger fish than him but I couldn't do it because Gun Lake is full of small fish after the spawn <laughs> Do you remember by any chance what it was that you had when you won that tournament? I was like 56 inches. It was terrible. Yeah, it was <laughs> <laughs> pretty small limits. I know that was Dave's first win in a while. He was pretty excited about it. And yeah. It, it was interesting because I think that was, I don't know, a second or third tournament, but it seemed like I was hoping I'd get really easy tournaments to, to judge in the first number ones. And I think the first one was off by a quarter of an inch. The second one was a tie. It was pretty crazy early on in the year. Yeah. <clears throat> now, out of, we say out of 12 events you finished in the top 10 11 of those 12 times but you started out pretty hot right out of the gate and 
consistent. Out of the first six events, you took second place four out of those six times. Yeah. What what makes you so consistent on the water? Just getting the limit. Just find first, the, first find thing the limit. Is, is trying to find the limit and and just getting the first five fish and once you get five working on that from there on uh you know i see so many people and and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say they're doing the wrong thing because sometimes it'll work you know go out and throw a frog on lily pads first thing in a three-hour tournament yeah you might catch five fish in three hours maybe but sometimes it you know <laughs> going and catching the 12 14 inches throwing a med rig Mm -hmm. is it'll work especially in a three-hour tournament yeah, right you guys have witnessed it's it, three hours is not that long to fish and i think that's what makes the top water series unique and difficult as a tournament type series because you will have a short amount of time you don't have time to go you know cast unnecessary cast in a right. three-hour right. tournament every cast has to make it count what are you doing as far as lure selection bait selection in a short amount of time because like we said you only have a few hours short amount of time to go out and fit are you cast a couple times if it's not hidden put it back find something different until you find something to work or do you have that go-to that you try to lean on until something hits and then work it um you know pre-fishing had a lot to do with it you know i i fished um we fished 12 events right yep i think six or seven of them i pre-fished three or four days before it happened. And Dave Mull, he, he, he has told me time and time again, you know, the Ned rig is the way to go. You know, it's the thing for three years now. <laughs> First time I met Dave was down at Gull Lake and he threw the Ned rig at one dock for seven hours in a man cave. <laughs> I don't remember how he finished, but I know he threw the Ned rig because he gave me one and said, there's small mouth over there, go throw this. And I didn't catch any, but, um, the, I mean, the Ned Rig is great, and, and the thing about the Ned Rig is, is um, you can catch anything. I mean, um, and I, I've caught a lot, a lot of fish fast with it, but if you ever talk to Dave, he'll say, I've never seen anybody fish as fast as Pyatt with a Ned Rig, because I'll burn down a bank in 20 minutes with a Ned Rig, you're supposed, you know, <laughs> finesse. You're supposed to throw it out there and let it sit. No, I, that's not how I fish. I, I like to cover water and, and get it done as fast as I can. And um, and like when we went to um, when we went to Wattasis Lake, I finished second there. And Dave had told me earlier in the week, "Oh, it's epic jig bite." So I brought three jig rods, and I, I, that's all I threw. Uh, Grant Grant uh, was right right around me, and I threw a jig right next to him the whole time, and I caught fish. I mean. It was a good time. I mean, but Heck I yeah. wouldn't have caught them if Dave wouldn't have told me. Wabasis is ten minutes from my house, and I had never—I'd only been on the lake once, and it was in April. <laughs> yeah. But Dave was like, "Throw a jig." I went through a jig, and sure enough, so I, I, nice. I give Dave a lot of credit because Dave, Dave's one of the guys that'll help you out no matter what. So absolutely, that's a lot of what this trail series is about—is uh, helping out your fellow angler on the water, tips and advice and tricks things like that uh that's what made this trail super successful for this season i feel like so that's really good to hear so we've got one of our viewers asking uh for you Pyatt. he says uh jamie says i am from tennessee what part are you from knoxville tennessee did did anybody say you were from tennessee did you say that or did he just get it from the voice i probably got it from the voice makes sense <laughs> <laughs> all right go ahead uh now going through the season out of the first six events, four second place finishes, yep. but your first win didn't come until week nine at Long Lake, followed up with a back-to-back -back win at Pine Lake. What took you nine weeks to figure <laughs> this out? And, um, then, well, and then a double up. Well, it had to he, do with- he, he threw a tantrum after yes, week eight. I, had, I, I was pieting the week before. <laughs> So the week before, Dave Mole won, and I just absolutely was pissed off because Dave won, and he was he, he ended up being like three points behind me in Angler of the Year. And here I I'd finished all these seconds, and Dave wins, and I had a bad event. I didn't find the fish until the last 30 minutes of the tournament. And I just I was upset myself, and I come back, and I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. And 
Uh, some controversy came up with uh, Ketchkowski in my hand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we had that thing going, and, and I kind of got aggravated. And the next week I said, you know what, I'm just going to go win. And I practiced at Belding uh, at uh, Long Lake a lot. And uh, me and my wife went down and kayaked around, and I found a school on Sunday. And I actually told her, I said, I made two casts, caught two fish. I said, we got to leave this. Let's go. Left, loaded up, come back um, Tuesday and ended up winning the tournament on that spot. Never moved. I mean, I moved after I caught that's, every fish that was there. That's awesome. And Kyle actually got to see me catch a big one there uh, <laughs> on a whopper plopper after dark at the boat ramp. He was in his boat, and I, I'm messing around. And I throw a whopper plopper and caught a four-and-a-half pounder. I think that was the first time I saw anybody catch a fish on a whopper plopper. Yeah, I don't think they catch a lot of fish. No, not too many. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny because I remember after that week eight event, you were you were pretty upset after that one, and we all went out afterwards. A lot of the top water events, we'll have a small group of guys going out for a drink or something like that afterwards, and just hanging out talking. And I think I bought you a beer, and I believe Dave bought you a beer, which which shows how good of a guy he is. And uh, I, I just I, like free beer. We we thought we were being nice. I don't know if it pissed you off or what, but because you came back and beat our ass the next couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, well, another response. It looks like uh, Jamie is also from K Town. South Doyle High School. Yeah, I went to Carnes High School. I actually probably played football against South Doyle. You guys any good? No. <laughs> state, Terrible. State of Tennessee. Terrible. So. <laughs> it does make sense. We yeah. have three good football teams in the whole state. <laughs> <laughs> Youth Pop Warner. Huh? Youth Pop Warner teams. No, no. We got three high school <laughs> teams that are good. And it's not college, so. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... We've kind of led up to your second place finishes, four out of the top six. You found back-to-back -back wins at event nine and event ten. But at that time, the Angler of the Year race was still super close. There was actually three of you that were kind of in a, a two-event hunt, let's, so to speak. I don't want to call it a showdown, but yeah. one of you was a little farther back than uh, – the other two but uh <laughs> to be fair i don't think that i should have even been mentioned in that conversation <laughs> <laughs> it could have happened now the, the way we do our series or last year the way we did it was only only six of the 12 events counted so if you went and you used those six events i was i was in there i think i was only 25 points behind and actually if i'd have done better in the last event i had a chance to catch dave and, and play second but if you if you took out those six events and you used all 12 I think that uh, Pyatt had something like 900 points. Dave was at 850, and I was down at like 600. So I, I really should not have, have even been in that conversation. <laughs> were, were you nervous going into that last stretch? Not the last the, the, the last. he already told me it was over. Well, the, uh, event 11. <laughs> event 11. I, I don't remember which one that was. I don't I don't think I did very well. But oh. I think I finished like six. But um, – yeah, I finished sixth. I'm pretty sure. Event eleven was Green Lake. Yeah, I finished. And then followed I, I'm by Big sure Pine. Pretty sure I finished sixth, and Dave had to. Dave had to win. Dave had to win. He had to win event eleven. I think Kyle won. Yeah, actually, I've I've got a pretty good memory of event eleven. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. Kyle or, won and, and he cheated. So right, yeah, uh, he used a uh, he trolled an Alabama rig for three hours. So. Right, I'm I'm a big fan of trolling. <laughs> no, we were out there before event eleven, which I don't remember the lake that it was on, but. Uh, it was pretty entertaining because before the event, Pyatt's going around and he's giving everybody a fake identifier code. <laughs> and then I told him, I'm like, hey, you want as many possible people to have that code because if Dave doesn't win, you're taking home Angler of the Year. But if Dave wins, then it's it's still on. It's going to be really close. And uh, I think you did decent in that event. I don't remember Probably exactly. Like six. Um, or actually, was that? No, I think. Did I? Was it me first and Dave second, I think? Yeah, Dave yeah it was. Second. Yeah, Dave finished second. So that was what uh, kind of ended it there. But. I kind of left the air pieting too, because because if it wasn't for those events, you know the six event rule, uh, I wouldn't have had anything to worry about after event ten. So <laughs> I was pieting for the last well, two it, events. It, it's a good thing that our last event didn't count for you. Yeah, total. absolutely. I zeroed and um, it was it was. Uh, it was actually that was my best finish well, of, <laughs> of the season. Honestly, my, honestly, my you I left them there for me. I didn't really care because I showed <laughs> yeah. up. I showed up to the boat ramp drinking beers. So uh -huh. I was ready to go. I, I was, was excited about uh, finishing the season. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now, I, for reference, drinking beer at the boat lunch is not allowed. Yeah, it's not it's not legal, but I already knew I was going to zero <laughs> because I hate Big Pine Island. They can drain the lake. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing they can do there is make it sand dunes for snowmobiles and and um, four wheelers. It's true. <laughs> that big island down the middle would be a sweet ramp. Yep. The funny thing is, when you and I went out there and practiced, we actually did pretty good. No, you did pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch crap. The I actual event, bridge, neither though. of us I did. I was catching six-inch bluegill. It was right? Awesome. Yeah. You, you you put on a bluegill clinic at that lake. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to find a spot at home for that ginormous trophy? Yeah. It's in the was kitchen. Was the wife in the kitchen? Yeah. It's still in the kitchen. <laughs> it hasn't moved. The wife loves that, I bet. Oh, yeah. She loves it. Oh, I'm sure. She, she, she approves of any successes I have. <laughs> oh, yeah. A ginormous fish trophy. She'll in comment the here in a minute about it. So. I, oh, tell it. us how you love it, Cassie. I've seen the trophy, <laughs> yeah, and it, uh, it looks good in the kitchen. I can approve the, the uh, trophy in the kitchen. Grant, Grant approves the trophy location in the kitchen? Yeah, I think we need a picture of that posted up here. Okay, I'll get it. <laughs> All right, uh, we are going to take a break for a second and uh, show you another preview of Berkeley, and we'll be right back. Hey guys, Fletcher Shock here, Abu Garcia Pro. I want to talk to you today about gear ratio speed while flipping and pitching. You know, flipping and pitching is something that I do quite a bit. I primarily use the pitching technique. And when you're using the pitching technique and you're, and you're pitching the bait out there, it's very important to be able to bring that bait back really quick to make another flip. And the only way that I'm able to do that successfully is by using a high speed gear ratio reel. Uh, this is the new Revo rocket. This thing turns 41 inches per turn of the handle. So I'm constantly getting my bait in the cover to the bottom, um, obviously and back out to the next spot as quick as I possibly can with a higher speed gear ratio reel. All right, welcome back to Topwater Live. Uh, we will finish up the second half of our interview with 2019 Topwater Series Angler of the Year, Mr. Matt Pyatt. Uh, now, Matt, uh, I see it on social media daily. I get email spams daily about going out, finding sponsorships. Do I want to be sponsored? I get those spam emails all the time. I know a lot of people are interested in it, but you have been able to come across some legitimate sponsors. Um, now's the time to show them some love. Um, who's jumped on board with you? Oh uh, yeah, I, I uh, have got a lot of help from Water Dog Outfitters out in uh, Montague, Montague, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> Tennessee, we call it Montague, but up here it's like Spanish or something, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, and um, my biggest help that I've had over the years is uh, Pure, po Pure Poison Jigs company in uh, Lenore City, Tennessee, Mike Cole. He's helped me a lot. Um, he's uh, he's uh, been around since day one. So even when I was uh, boat, tournament, boat tournament fishing and back home, he was always helping me out stuff. So Pure Poison Jigs yep, pure out poison of Tennessee? Pure Poison Jigs out of Lenore City, Tennessee. Go to purepoisonjigsstore.com. Nice. Pretty sure. Yeah, we can share that information after uh, we sign off. And uh, Water Dog, he is actually jumped on board. I, I know he's been an MKT sponsor for a few years now, and he's jumped on board to uh, help sponsor the Lakeshore Topwater Series uh, division this year. So super excited to have Steve aboard. Uh, we've got a couple other Water Dogs in the house tonight. So Grant and Matt Diesel are here with us tonight. So as, all as on the Water Dog team. As Diesel would say, get on that deal. Get on that deal. Get, go visit them and get on that deal. <laughs> uh, any other sponsorships? Any anybody else oh, that's helped you out along the way? Yeah, my wife. My wife's cousins helped me out a lot. He owns a uh, well, her cousin and uncle own a title company up in Traverse City. Uh, they're helping me out. I, I've got some announcements to awesome. go with that later. Awesome. And, um, Congratulations. They're, they're getting ready for the national championship to send me down there and, and help me out with that. And, that is uh, fantastic, man. It ought to, be a, ought to be a great time down in Gunnersville. I'm excited. Uh, with the Topwater Series finale on Grand River this Sunday, uh, one, it's on a Sunday, which you can't come, bowling. Um, but anyway, it's on oh, the Hold up, hold up, hold up a sec. How do you get away with doing all the stuff 
that you do and the wife is okay with it because when when i shortly after i met you you said we got married yada yada and you said the wife knows that i fish whatever you said march through through november and then you just start bowling no i've always bowled but the the deal is is (laughs) up until this year deal up (laughs) up hashtag get on that deal up until this year she has bowled with me so this year she's so pregnant. In, we got four weeks the until the baby comes, mm-hmm. and you know things are probably going to change after that. I don't know, but good luck with that bowling career. After yeah, the, after I'm the not baby very comes. good at it, so I'd rather and fish. that golf career and yeah, that I fishing little, career. And <laughs> I'd rather fish. <laughs> if only Michigan wouldn't get so cold. Yeah, that's that's the downfall. Be it up here in this big beautiful state, it gets cold early and it lasts forever. With, uh, like I said, the series finale being on Grand River this year, are you more preferential to fishing lakes or fishing rivers? What, um, if you had to choose between one or the other, what's, if, what's your If shot? I was fishing this weekend, I'd be in a bayou. Um, I know other people don't agree with that, but I do my best, you know, junk fishing. Mm-hmm. You know, going and just chucking and winding. Let's see what happens. Grand River's a tough one. I mean... It's, yeah. a big, it's a big river, um, and our, our boundaries go from west of Grand Haven at the piers all the way to Plainfield, so that's a large stretch of river to fish where, I mean, you, anything can happen, basically, with that boundary set up like it is, so it, it will be exciting to see what happens on Sunday uh, with it being this late in the year as well. A lot of our Grand River events are always early in the spring or, you know, right beginning of summer, but... We haven't fished one in Grand River this late in the season, so it'll be a different kind of fishing for if, for me. Why if not? If somebody can find the smallmouth, they'll win. I yeah. Mean, this, right now, the smallmouth should be moving up, and and you should be able to catch some smallmouth. But you know, it's one of those things you got to find them. Got to find them. Finicky. That's why we go do it. Yeah, not I did troll for them. I did a little bit of pre-fishing, no trolling, but. Uh, <laughs> A little bit of pre-fishing, real fishing, actually, and uh, didn't have much <laughs> luck. So maybe I should troll. Maybe that's going to be the key. <laughs> uh, talking about your poison jig sponsorship, what is your go-to rod and reel combo? What, what's, um, what's your favorites? Um, I, I really love uh, – I have a Joe, Bur- a Joe Burns custom rods out of Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, it's a medium-heavy – uh, I use that as a jig rod, and I use that as an Alabama rig rod. Okay. Um, and I, I really love the new Corrado DCs. Um, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I was an Abu guy for a long time, loved them, and then these DCs come out, and uh, they've always had the DCs, but the affordable DCs came out, mm-hmm. and I, I've got a few of them now um, that I, I won off some drawings that the other boys were in that they didn't win, but I did. So, um <laughs> <laughs> but the Corrado DCs are unbelievable real, so. Nice. Now, if you could choose only one bait out of your tackle box that you would have to fish with for the rest of your life, what are you grabbing out of that tackle box? Um, it'd probably be a peanut butter and jelly Ned Rig because I know it's going to catch fish. It, and it's going to catch a lot of fish, you know. I might have to catch fish to eat, and it'll catch crappie, bluegill, anything. Yeah, um, it's a good answer. A Ned Can't rig go would wrong be with a Ned rig. Yeah, I love it. Now, we were talking about you uh, growing up in Tennessee, uh, and as everybody knows, the KBF National Championship heads back down to Lake Gunnersville this April. Uh, your old stomping grounds, right? Yeah, sort of close. <laughs> now, for the viewers that haven't had the privilege of fishing that far south or fishing a big, beautiful body of water like Lake Gunnerville, what can we expect to encounter when we get down there? Um, <laughs> you're gonna have you're gonna have in April the grass is gonna be beginning beginning to bloom, and uh, you're gonna have some grass, but not a lot. Um. A lot of big fish. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be one of those slobber knockers. You know, you better hope you have 100, 98 to 100 inches a day because yeah. you're not you're not going to be there if you don't. So. From all of the homework and 
YouTube, I've watched. Hey, I I truly believe it's going to be a hundred inch plus a day, just just to stay up near the, the top of the leaderboard. It's going to be that kind of early spring fishery, I think. It, it's not quite a Texas fishery, but it's it's a. I think your average fish here is like three and a half pounds. Yeah. <laughs> so, with your average fish being that big, you know, three and a half pounders, what, a 19 incher? Mm -hmm. I mean, don't be surprised if big fish every day is 24 inches, 25 inches. I mean, it could be smaller. I mean, it's a Tennessee River chain, so weather and generation schedule and all that stuff will play a big key in it. Sure. Um, you, you might have one day where you just absolutely kill them. The next day you go do the same thing and it's just not it because right. it, it all has to do with TBA and how they generate. So. Yeah, it's going to be interesting just to get down there, do some pre-fishing, and actually have boots on the ground to, <laughs> to kind of fill it out rather than watching all these videos and uh, playing <laughs> Xbox games <laughs> to, to get my feel. So uh, One of the well, things I kind of laugh about when it comes to uh, Gunnersville is because you say that you know if you had to go down to one lure, it's going to be peanut butter and jelly Ned rig. But you also talked about down there that all of us kind of northern finesse fishermen, we're going to be a little bit out of our element. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting because it comes at a time where, you know, the spawn's in and it could work, but the chances of it working are, eh, yeah. to me, to me, in my opinion. Right, right. And, and for me, my confidence level's in other things, which I'm not going to say. So um, I kind of know what I want to do. and. And it, it's a 75 mile body of water. Yeah, you can share. I, you can share a little info. Yeah, God, throw something in the water. <laughs> um, if you throw something that vibrates pretty good, you're liable to catch some fish. I, that's that's what I'll throw at you. It's got to have a lot of vibration. I have no clue what kind of vibration, but something. <laughs> well, Matt, I. I appreciate you taking time to come in tonight and hanging out with us for a little while and uh, letting us do this back and forth and I want to congratulate you again on an awesome season, our 2019 Angler of the Year Top Water Trail Series, uh, the inaugural AOY. So always, always be number one on the board. So congratulations. Uh, are you going to stick around with us for a little while? Oh yeah. yeah. All We're right. Gonna fish some more and I appreciate you guys for putting it on because uh, the Topwater Trail on Tuesday night was just an absolute blast all year long, and um, I, it, it was just fun because it wasn't like so serious. We had a good time and just, you know, cut up, and afterwards we go get some food and drink a beer and have a good time. So. Heck yeah, that's what made it, like I said earlier, that's what made it unique and uh, successful was the extremely friendly atmosphere, always, always able to hang out afterwards and uh, share stories go have a drink grab a hot dog or something it was well, it was a lot of fun yeah i think it was pretty interesting just because i mean we all met each other well i knew him of course but we all met each other you know through uh fishing those top water series and i mean it was only what, 12 weeks over the summer but it kind of felt like in that time frame you went from guys fishing together i mean i fished with a lot of people for multiple years and you still you know barely know them but uh you know it uh it was pretty fun with with the top water series because i think by the end of it I mean, we all felt like we we're brothers almost as, yeah. as much time as we we and spent it, together fishing the funny thing about top water is i had no idea anything about it till about three weeks before when grant said are you gonna fish those top water things a lot of them were by your house <laughs> what are you talking about yeah you did luck out with yeah. some of that lake placement on the schedule yeah, wait till next year it's gonna <laughs> be better. yeah i remember when he complained about going down south uh, grand rapids for a lake after we fished like next to his house for the previous four <laughs> weeks before that <laughs> right. drove past his house and he I'm, told us where to go have a beer afterwards <laughs> i'm gonna go take some money from don roth this year over on the uh the other side of the or not the other side of the state but the lakeshore division i want to come take some of don and grant's money yeah you're gonna be you're, you're gonna be gone from the wife for two nights a week now yeah <laughs> she's okay with it as long as i bring money back <laughs> All right, ready to get moving on? Yeah. All right. What's next? So we've got a couple more things to go about, and then, uh, then we'll play a game of Last Cast, which we're pretty excited to do. But before we do that, we want to talk uh, first, talking a little bit of Border City Classic announcements. So um, this is the first time that we have ever kind of laid out a lot of details about it. I can't go into everything, but I can pretty much announce, let's say, 90% of the stuff coming for the Border City Classic. So as you guys might know, Border City Classic is coming back on board. Um, it's not an 
event I have fished before, but I was fortunate to be able to work with MKT in 2019 here to help run some of those events. And we are going to be bringing that back in 2020. So pretty excited to have Summit Sports on as a sponsor and bring that one back in 2020. So the way it's gonna work is the, you know, a little bit potentially different than it's been ran in past years. Um, but entry fee will be done $75 US, uh, US dollars. And then there is going to be two registrations, one for US and one for the Canada side. Um, so you choose which side you're fishing for and register for that one. <clears throat> uh, MKT check-in is going to be at Summit Sports, which is the banner sponsor for the event. And then the Canadian side check-in has not yet been uh, announced, um, but there will be a separate check-in so you don't have to cross the border and all that if you don't want to. Uh, one cash payout uh, is going to be paid to the top 10% of the fields for the combined. So we're going to combine all those scores and pay out the top 10%. Um, and there is then going to be a team uh, payout. So basically the way we're going to decide the winner of the Classic is that there is going to be obviously the U.S. side and the Canadian side, and it's going to be the top five scores from each side added together, and that is going to be uh, which the team wins, takes home the trophy, and then $1,000 will be given to that team uh, to split up amongst them however they want to duke it out. And event times, uh, pretty standard, staging 5 a.m., must remain within 50 yards of the launch. You can leave 30 minutes prior uh, to lines in, and uh, that time will be announced. 3 p.m. lines out, and then 5 p.m. check-in. So you're gonna have a couple hours to get to your check-in. <clears throat> and I think that is about it. I'm, uh, Trolling will not be allowed in that event, so yes. I am excited to be able to announce that. Drifting is okay, and I'm told drifting is a... Oh, no, that's... Sorry, I apologize. There was a term that I was told that Canadians call um, drift fishing, and I don't recall what it was, but I was told there's a special term that they like to call it, um, but I don't recall that was. Oh, dragging. They call it dragging, so... Um, dragging. And it says, in, in the notes I have here, it says, dragging is defined as casting a bait out and dragging behind the boat with forward human or electric powered motion, and that will not be permitted. Um, drifting is okay if there's no forward motion. So that is gonna be how that will that. MKT rules are going to apply for all of that. So Border City Classic will be back uh, next summer. And I think the d uh, date for that would have been posted on your screen. Don't have it offhand here. Um, but super excited to bring that is, back for uh, next year. June 27th. June 27th. So Border City Classic will be coming back next year. I'm excited to fish that event. That should be a pretty fun one. <clears throat> All right. Uh, now with the Border City Classic announcements, uh, we would like to roll in to our weekly Lake Divisional release. Uh, this week, we are going to focus on the Lakeshore League Series Division. So, let's get started. And just for those of you, you know, again, we know we announced a few times, Lakeshore is the event that uh, Water Dog has sponsored. So, that is basically going to be in Montague and surrounding areas. Obviously, you'll see with some of these lake announcements, but it'll kind of give you a good idea of which league that is. All right. Ready to do it? Yep. I'm all set. All right. Lake One, Duck Lake, just inside of Lake Michigan, five miles southwest of Whitehall in Muskegon County. Uh, this is a really cool lake. It is known for it, it, its really clear waters, and it's set in a really quiet type setting. Uh, I've heard award-winning sunsets make it a beautiful lake. Um, it, it's roughly 270 acres in size, so it's not a huge lake by any means, uh, just two miles long and a, and a mile wide. Uh, but it does have about 4.5 miles of shoreline, uh, which is cool. Uh, average depth of nearly 25 feet with spots that reach about 60 feet. So event number one, Duck Lake. Gonna be a fun one, not a lake that I've ever fished, but I'm excited to check it out. Yeah, me either. I, I stole that sunset off of Wikipedia, so <laughs> I'd like to see one myself. <laughs> Uh, stop number two for Lakeshore Division. We are going to Petty's Bayou. So we are going to launch from Petty's Bayou. Uh, you, for those of you that don't know where Petty's Bayou is, it is a part of Spring Lake here in Grand Rapids, Grand Haven area, uh, located east of North Fruitport Road. Uh, like I said, it is a part of Spring Lake. Spring Lake will be allowed to be fished for this particular event. 
uh, with a surface area of about just over a thousand acres. Um, it's pretty large lake, Spring Lake and Petty's Bayou all combined there. So uh, average depth is about 18 feet with a max depth of around 40 feet. So Petty's, Petty's Bayou, uh, the north east tip of spring lake there that that could be a really cool starting spot yeah it's going to be a pretty fun event and, and one of the things that we do for these top waters and i think we've asked the same question you know amongst us organizers a number of times is we'll go oh what, what should we set the boundaries for this one and we always forget that you know in a three-hour tournament there's there's really not a reason to to set a boundary um so what we end up doing is basically if you want to take the commitment to you know going further away and use some of your time to, to do that you certainly can if you run a run into Spring Lake or over Smith's Bayou or something like that, you absolutely can. And if you want to keep it close and, you know, do a Pyatt or a Dave Mole and fish right next to the ramp, you can do that too. So it's kind of that risk reward uh, type of scenario. But uh, yeah, we're launching from Petty's Bayou, but everything uh, is going to be eligible, even heading into the river if you want. <laughs> absolutely. So stop number three on the Lakeshore Division, Muskegon Lake. Now we've talked about Muskegon Lake a couple times over the last couple weeks. And for you, those of you that are unfamiliar, Muskegon Lake is a big body of water, uh, just over 4,100 4, acres uh, located in Muskegon County. Uh, now, Muskegon Lake forms about a 12 square mile broad harbor along the eastern shoreline of Lake Michigan, uh, approximately two and a half miles wide by five and a half miles long. Uh, Muskegon, it, we've talked about it before, it, it's a big body of water and it can be tough fishing sometimes weather depending uh, it could be miserable out there or it could be a beautiful day on a big body of water so yeah matt who's with us you uh obviously fished the muskegon i think you did pretty well there last year right yeah i finished fourth and I, if i remember right i actually missed that event but i believe the weather was pretty pretty crazy on that one yeah it got real windy Nothing else to say. <laughs> I, got windy. I went to a point and Grant comes around the point and goes, you don't want to go that way. So. <laughs> Normally this guy doesn't stop talking. You give him a couple of beers and he goes down to one word answers. <laughs> it was I'm bad, only, it was bad so weather. Get fine. Yep, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Beast mode. <laughs> uh, ready for stop number four on the Lakeshore Divisional Trail? Uh, Lake, excuse me, stop number four, the Grand River. Now we've talked about the Grand River a couple times tonight. Uh, I love seeing Grand River thrown on these schedules like we just said a couple minutes ago. It is a huge river. Uh, it, it's one of the you know three major tributaries that make up Lake Michigan. Uh, it, it's the longest river in the state uh, with a ton of little fingers and bayous and the lakes attached to the Grand. Uh, it's one of the state's best fisheries. Uh, so to see it on the schedule in a couple different places makes that super cool. Gives everybody a chance to hopefully get out and fish the Grand River at some point in your division or in the series uh, in 2020. So excited to see that back on the list. Yep, it's definitely a fun one. I Actually, probably my favorite place to fish, but I've, I've never fished well in a tournament there. And, and for that one, we're going to be launching, I don't know the the name of the launch but i believe it's a dnr launch kind of off the north side of the river just northeast of uh of stern's bayou and all those that'll be the launch that we're launching for off of uh indian channel so that's the launch that will be used for that one i don't know that it even has a name and it's, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere but that will be the launch that we are going to use for that one so awesome all right so those are the lakeshore uh first four of the year lakeshore is every other week the dates were posted as part of that one so you'll see those up there but that's an every other week series starting on may 6th kind of the west side of michigan right along the lake hence the name and uh, we will have the other four lakes for you uh, when steve crooks the sponsor of that one joins us in a few weeks so stay tuned for that one and we'll get the uh other four lakes to you in a couple weeks we're gonna to go to a quick sponsor message and then when we get back we're gonna do a giveaway and play last call
All right, and welcome back. Thanks to, to Berkeley for giving us some information about everything that they do and for donating all of our prizes this season. Uh, we've had a bunch of prizes donated to them for all of our events and prizes as well to uh, for our giveaways for the show. So tonight we've got a pack of bearded single tail grubs, kind of actually a pretty cool grub that uh, we're going to be giving away. And the way we are going to do this is that the uh, first person that can correctly name and spell in the chat the hometown of Matt Pyatt. You can't do it if you're in the audience. <laughs> Sorry, Diesel. <laughs> the first person that can correctly type in the chat, correctly spell the hometown that Matt Pyatt is from is going to win those. Also, I promise to everyone from the previous weeks, I did not forget to mail out your stuff. <laughs> I'm going to be doing that <laughs> tomorrow. I'm a little bit bad with that kind of stuff, but they're all set aside and we'll be heading out your way tomorrow. So. We are watching the chat. We need the city and the state correctly spelled. The close up of these are green screens probably gonna play havoc if I focus in on it. These bearded single tail grubs. There's not just, actually holes through them, that's just the green screen. Looking. You haven't used these before. They look like little squids on the front with the tail on the back. Need need the city and the state, guys. These things look awesome. You may not get these. You may get a replacement pack as in the mail. Yeah, I actually think those are really cool. Like, I feel like there's a... I feel like these would work in the river come Sunday. Yep. You can't. You can't take them. <laughs> Start brainstorming there. Sorry. No, they're actually a really cool bait. I hadn't seen something like that until... You'd probably uh... use them on a drop shot. <laughs> no, yep. That's not a drop shot. Sorry, drop shit. Drop shit is the technical name for it. All right, I believe we have a winner. Chad Watson, first one to put in Knoxville, Tennessee, correctly spelled. Can I get the verification? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Don Roth even had it wrong. He's a buddy of yours. Yeah, Don don't know how to spell. He, he didn't no. spell. <laughs> Apparently he spells Knoxville, Chattanooga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, tomato. <laughs> Chad Watson, make sure you send me your address so I can get those out to you. And we are now going to finish our segment by but playing. Before, not to cut you off there, but I just saw in our chat uh, some very special people are watching us tonight. Uh, we saw Mr. Bill Bishop, Gary and Lee Bishop, and Diane Porter are watching this video. video. For you, those of you that, that don't know, Mr. Bill Bishop is Kyle and I's grandfather and uh, has recently been battling some health issues. So, Grandpa, if you're still watching, uh, get well soon. Uh, thinking of you always and uh, just saw that pop up on the screen so wanted to send a quick shout out so uh, please continue yep I will continue I'm not gonna talk about that <laughs> <laughs> I will get emotional if I do but thank you for joining in guys all right so we are going to play a game called last cast and basically we are kind of modeling this off a much more higher quality station that broadcasts sporting things we have eight topics and we are gonna throw up a timer and basically we have a minute for each topic to talk about it and argue about it, agree. I'll play devil's advocate if I have to, um, but we are going to kind of discuss what that topic is. But there is a special rule is that you have each competitor, uh, everybody here has the option to yell last cast or just one more cast, however they wanna play it. And then they get the remaining time on that specific item uh, to talk you know anything they want about it everybody else has to shut up but they can only use that one time so without further ado first topic tonight is spinner baits or chatter baits who wants to get started here i can't do the jackhammers yet i, I i'm so scared to death of losing a 20 dollar lure <laughs> of throwing it that i'll stick to spinner baits well the difference to me between a jackhammer and spinner bait is you got a jig and a spinner bait together and a square bill crankbait. Say that again? You have a square bill, you have a jig, right. and you have a spinner bait all together. All together. All together because you got a square bill, which is the blade. Right. And then you have the blade, which is spinner bait, and then you have the jig. So you got a little bit of everything going on. You got on a little there. bit of everything. I mean So I think that I'm gonna have to say that chatter baits kick spinner baits ass all the time, except for one time, and I think that is in the fall. I feel like in the fall, especially this time of year, maybe rolling into uh, Grand River this weekend, I feel like that uh, the spinner baits sometimes just seem to, to pull back better results. To me, it all depends on the wind. If if the wind is blowing really hard and there's big waves and stuff, I, I don't think anything beats a spinner bait for me. 
All right, we are out of time on that one. We are on to our next topic. This one, kayak fishing, should motors be allowed? Who wants to start off with that one? Oh, absolutely. I think they should. Any more <laughs> No. La last Any more cast. <laughs> last cast. Uh, I don't have a trolling motor on you stole uh, mine. my kayak. Um, I don't see why it's necessary. You're in a kayak. It, it's not a boat. If you want to go boat fishing, go take out a boat. Uh, you can either pedal or paddle. That's the point of the kayak, to go more places that you don't need a motor to get to. Uh, I, I just don't feel it's necessary. Um, I, I think it's kind of lazy. Um, uh, <laughs> I can't feel another 20 seconds about how I feel about well, this. Well, I can feel some but, time. <laughs> uh, go for it. All right. So I was, was going to use my last cast for that one. I'm glad I got we'll a few seconds tears up for you. <laughs> my reasoning for thinking motors should be allowed is that there is a huge gap between paddling and pedaling and that motors are an affordable way to even that gap. A couple hundred bucks, you can put a motor on your kayak, and you can even the gap between paddling and pedaling. We're I, on to the next topic. I can't rebuttal there. Right, because I was correct. All right, next topic, Tennessee football. Last guy. Yep. He, he has a All right, so we're better than any other football team ever. With a motor. See that so, graphic up there? Yeah. <laughs> we win a lot of coin tosses, and we lose a lot of football games, but we're still better than your team. Um, at least – at least we don't have a coach that, you know, coached in the NFL that was good and you ruined it by bringing him to Michigan because Michigan sucks. Uh, didn't you hire Lane Kiffin like a couple Lane years Kiff ago? It's Lane Kiffin. <laughs> and he was nothing in the NFL. At least at least, uh, old Harbaugh went to the Super Bowl and then you guys ruined him. I'm sure there hey, is last a... last call. You're not allowed to talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he is correct there. Official ruling. So, anyways, back to what I was saying. We're still the best. It doesn't matter how many losses we have. We're the greatest team ever. And anytime you have to judge that, it's because you don't know because you're not a fan. Um, until you go to Neyland Stadium and sit down and watch a game, you have no idea what football really is. Um, how many more seconds I got? Oh, I'm out. You're, yep, no you're, out of time. you're done. Thank you, God. You keep scooting away, you're going to be about 50 yards behind Yeah, this us. seat moves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next topic. Pre-fishing, should... <laughs> now you're too close. Pre-fishing, should it be allowed and does it help? Oh, yeah, it helps. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We don't need a minute for that. I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like pre... Well, okay, first, does it help? I, if it can. However, my best events this year were ones I did not pre-fish. Yeah, so, it's because you went out and fished instead of going, oh, well, nope. you know... I, I like pre-fishing, um, especially for I'm these. I'm not done talking. I, I'm done. <laughs> these topwater trail series uh, where you only have a three-hour window to go fish. It's on a different body of water every Tuesday or every Wednesday or Sunday or Saturday, whatever series of topwater you're running. It may have been somewhere you've never been before. You don't know the water. You don't know the area. The only thing I don't like about pre-fishing is same-day pre-fishing, where if – it's an evening event that starts at six o'clock and you allow pre-fishing up until noon of that day. I'm not a big fan of same day pre-fishing. So I prefer a 24 hour window cutoff. Scale it back a little bit. Dang it. I see it both ways. Uh, I, had a, I had an opinion, but he ruined uh, it for me. Time out. <laughs> All right, Shake, shaky heads versus Ned Riggs. Well, here I like the Ned Rig, but back home I really like the shaky head. And the reason why is uh, you don't get hung as much because you have a lot of timber down south. Where here you don't have timber. I mean, some lakes you do, like Skagmog. But most of the lakes are sandy, and there's no need to have anything weedless unless you're going through grass. I'm going to go Ned Rig on this one. I actually haven't fished a shaky head a lot. I've seen good fish caught off it. I feel like the people I fish with that fish shaky heads will a lot of time catch a little bit bigger fish. Yeah, but you fish next to me. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's look back at them scores for the last year. <laughs> but uh, Ned Rig, I definitely catch a lot more. I'll give you a few seconds to brag here. Yeah, I, I like the shaky head. Uh, head. I, I'm not so much a finesse fisher. I think Ned Rigging takes a little bit more finesse than than shaking it back to you. Um, I've had good success with shaky heads, um, probably more than a Ned Rig. So that that's my only reason. Just more success. I'll, I'll throw this out before we go to the next one. I guarantee you, you'll outfish somebody with a Nedrick with a shaky head down south. All right, next topic: two-day tournaments. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big fan, uh, especially um, of the I, championship-style tournaments. I mean, I, I understand where 
where it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Uh, the reason why I think it, it works but it doesn't work for me is, you know, Sunday fishing all day in Traverse City and then having to drive two and a half hours home and then go to bed, go straight to bed, get the dogs, everything lined up, go to bed and go to work at four, four or five in the morning. It's just, it's, it's a lot to do in that time frame. So just the average person who works nonstop and has to come home and go to work the next morning, it kind of sucks. But also, I mean, I'll do it and but, I'll complain and whine about it. But is that really any I'll, different than a family that goes up north to the cabin or something Friday, Saturday, and then races home in the middle of all that crappy traffic on Sunday to get back to start their work week? Isn't it kind of the same no. thing except this time you're fishing and possibly can win money? No. Just quit your piding. All right, piding. we're on to the next topic. <laughs> trolling, last cast. All right, so I am very passionately against trolling, and I'm going to take this minute to talk about it. <laughs> Hurry up. you got 52 seconds. It doesn't take much. All right, so my feeling on trolling is that... You even wrote notes about this. Not many notes about that. Come on now. All right, trolling, I don't feel like, takes the skill that all of the other methods take. And I feel like that, you know, I actually got into a pretty decent argument with people online the other day about this. And, you know, some of them said, I don't even know that uh, trolling for bass was a thing. But I feel like in up north, smallmouth lakes, it... Come on, Phil. I'm not going to suck it up. I feel like in uh, up north smallmouth lakes that, uh, you know, trolling is a big issue. I feel like uh, if you look at MKT this past year, three out of five tournaments were run by people trolling. And every major kayak fishing organization and major fishing organization has banned it except for KBF. So I am a big fan of banning trolling. All right. Last topic. Drop shitting. Drop. Sh I didn't. I said drop shitting and I meant that not drop shotting. Well, Kyle is an expert in drop shitting. I've witnessed it multiple times when a guy's using a six-inch swim bait on a drop shot. You're giving out my, my, my trick here. Oh. Well, I've seen him catch big fish, too, but nine times out of ten, it's not going to catch crap because it's drop shitting. Um, <laughs> so what do you think, Kyle, about drop shitting? <laughs> I feel it's a pretty darn effective tactic. Uh, I think it, it kind of has to be used with the right type of swim baits. A lot of them don't work, but it was... Got that. <coughs> <clears throat> you right there? Yeah, sorry. I had a cold. I'm using something different now. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that tech works. <laughs> but, uh, no, I feel like it's extremely effective. Um, it, it Actually, the tournament that I won and a number of other uh, ones that I did well in came off of that this year. So, um, it, it's been extremely effective, and I big fan of it mike you got four seconds i like it uh watching you use it i used it myself had some success with it late in the season i liked it this was mainly just a topic because pi got pissed off that i sat next to him and effortlessly caught bigger fish than he did at, at big pine island that he hates <laughs> all right so i think that oh, is hold on hold on uh, hold on uh, where, the timer's gone no, i don't care the timer's not even saying zero it's <laughs> i don't care gone. now, now um, kyle's the first guy in america to try to boat flip a four and a half pounder <laughs> with eight pound test line on a drop shot and say it's all right it's not in a tournament <laughs> i'm like uh that was stupid <laughs> I didn't say it was all right. It's yes, not in a tournament. You did. I said I wouldn't have done that in a tournament, and that was probably stupid. I admitted that I was stupid for there doing were, that. There were a few uh, M43s involved in that situation. So. Right. I have an excuse. <laughs> all right, guys. We are about at the closing hour here. Uh, thanks for Matt Pyatt for coming on. Had a good time. We were looking forward to this. I've been talking shit about him on this show for the last couple of weeks, and uh, I'm excited to give him the opportunity to uh, come back on here and talk shit about me because. As I've always said, if you can dish it out, you better be able to take it. So happy to have him on. Thanks for coming on, Matt. Oh, no problem. I had a good time. And we've got a couple things to talk about for next week. So um, we have guest Cody Hart going to come on, who, for those of you who don't know him, is actually going to be kind of taking my role in the uh, Roots division of the Topwater League series. So he's going to be running the Tuesday night series in Grand Rapids. He's going to be joining us. And uh, should have good to have him on and, and talking some things. And then we are also doing the first four lakes of the Huron Division. So that is the east side division. We ran a, an event over at Pontiac Lake. was super popular and had uh, a sellout day. And then we ran another event over on Lobdell Lake, which we had a really good attendance too. Actually, I think our two yeah. of our highest attendance of the year. So east siders bringing it. Yep. Super excited to be bringing a series over there. And uh, other than that, we will be back next week. Thanks for joining me, guys.
Matt? Yeah, see y'all <laughs> Thank later. you for joining us tonight. Oh, it was a great time. Appreciate glad, it. I'm glad I got invited. Absolutely. Next time I come, I'm going to be funnier, though. Well, I'd also like to thank Mr. Matt Diesel for joining us as our uh, studio guest tonight. And uh, as usual, Grant the intern, thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. All your help tonight. <laughs> One of these days, he's going to say something. Good night, everybody. Maybe. Once in a while. <laughs>